Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brain's player too. Today, we're looking at Titanfall 2, a first-person shooter set in the far future where the key to surviving in combat is speed, maneuverability, and having a giant fighting robot. These are the Titans, giant, imposing, powerful weapons as tall as a two-story building and built in our image. But if they're so unstoppable, why don't we have giant humanoid robots of our own? At first blush, the human body seems like a good design to mimic. Our upright walking lets us travel long distances more efficiently while freeing up our hands for holding objects or fighting. A robot like us could presumably have these same advantages, and unlike wheeled or tracked robots, they could navigate uneven terrain and move quickly in any direction. Unsurprisingly then, people who actually make robots have had the same idea, and there have been plenty of attempts at humanoid machines. Right away, they've exposed a big flaw in the plan. Humans are unstable. Not mentally, although a giant killer robot with a temper would be a problem too. We're top-heavy, and trying to balance that weight over two legs is a skill that we've evolved over the course of our existence, and there are a dizzying array of sensors that keep us from toppling over. Obviously, our eyes are an important part of that. Visually, we can interpret what is up and what is down, and we can react when the floor seems to be coming up to meet us faster than we'd like. We also take into account input from our muscles and joints. Lean forward just a bit and you become aware of the increased pressure on the balls of your feet. And of course, there's the vestibular system in your inner ear, where three fluid-filled semicircular canals placed at right angles to each other act like spirit levels. All this information is put through your brain's cerebellum, a little bulb at the back of your brain that's in charge of coordination, muscle control, and of course, balance. The cerebellum is about 10% of your brain's total mass, but it contains nearly half its neurons. Getting that same array of sensors in a robot is a tall order, and giving it a brain that can interpret all the information fast enough is harder still. To overcome that, MIT has made a remote-controlled robot that sends feedback to a human wearing an exoskeleton. The feedback causes the human to react naturally to balance themselves, and the robot does the same. This way, when the robot throws a punch, the human can adjust their weight and the robot doesn't topple forward from the momentum of its swing. Titans in Titanfall have a neural link to their pilots, so they could use a similar solution. But more likely, by the time Titanfall takes place, robots that can steady themselves will be the norm. Boston Dynamics has already created a bipedal robot named Atlas that can stay upright, even when it's hit with projectiles or hockey sticks. Making sure they're more Titanfall than Titanfall over is one piece of the puzzle, but they also have human hands. Just like walking, hands are very difficult to mimic. Your brain dedicates a disproportionate amount of attention to input from your hands, and it's why we can firmly grab a grenade or gently pick up an injured person, but a robot will just crush everything. Not something you want when a Titan asks you to climb into its hand. Whether or not a Titan even needs hands, or if robots should be humanoid, might be the more important question. Giant fighting robots are cool, that's just page one, chapter one of the Coolness Handbook. But the challenges they pose when other designs could accomplish the same thing make them not really worth the effort. Still, that doesn't mean we should stop pursuing two-legged robots altogether. Because we've designed our world around us, a human-sized robot could be helpful using our tools or responding to disasters in places human rescuers can't get to. Maybe one day you'll be grateful when you see a humanoid robot coming, instead of terrified. Just be careful when you shake its hand. Thanks for watching this episode of Play Noggin. If you enjoyed what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for games or topics we should cover, go ahead and let us know in the comments. Until then, don't forget to keep on playing.